Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at the structure of benzene. We're going to talk about what benzene actually is, the theories and evidence behind the structure of benzene, including the Kekulé model, and we're going to cover why benzene is more stable than we'd expect it to be. The reactions of benzene and the mechanisms are outlined in separate videos. Check the links in the description below. Before we talk in detail about benzene, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. Hydrocarbons are compounds that contain only carbon and hydrogen atoms. They all have a molecular formula of C something, H something. Cyclic hydrocarbons have flat, ring like shapes that are formed when a carbon chain bonds back on itself. Bond lengths refer to the distance between the nuclei of two atoms bonded together, so essentially how long a bond is. Hydrogenation enthalpies refer to the enthalpy change that occurs when a molecule is hydrogenated. Hydrogenation means adding hydrogen atoms to an unsaturated hydrocarbon, forming a saturated hydrocarbon. Now, hydrogenation enthalpies are always negative as saturated hydrocarbons are more stable than unsaturated hydrocarbons, making hydrogenation an exothermic process. Recap done, let's go. Benzene was discovered in 1825, and soon after its molecular formula was determined to be C6H6. This presented a problem for chemists, as the formula didn't follow any of the usual bonding rules that other hydrocarbons seem to. To have that formula, scientists knew there must be double or even triple carbon bonds in the structure, and yet benzene was, relatively, unreactive compared to other compounds with those types of bonds in. But a chemist called Kekulé proposed a solution by suggesting that benzene was a cyclic hydrocarbon that had a hexagon ring-like structure, with the six carbon chain bonding back on itself. To ensure all carbon atoms have four bonds, each carbon has a single and a double bond to another carbon atom, given alternating single and double carbon bonds in the ring. This model went a long way to solving the puzzle of benzene and is now called the Kekulé structure. The IUPAC name for the Kekulé structure of benzene is cyclohexa 135 triene Now, the purpose of this video isn't to go through the naming of compounds, but the cyclo comes from the fact it's a cyclic hydrocarbon, the hex for the fact there are six carbon atoms, and the 135 triene from the fact that there are three double bonds in the structure starting at carbon-1, carbon-3, and carbon-5. This is why you sometimes see the Kekulé structure referred to as cyclohexa 135 triene For this video though, to keep things easier, we will refer to it as the Kekulé structure. Over time, it became clear that the carbon bonding in benzene is a little less straightforward than the model proposed by Kekulé. We now more commonly show the bonding using a hexagon with a ring in the middle. This ring will be explained in more detail later in the video, but let's first look at why the Kekulé structure doesn't quite fully add up. The first problem lies in bond lengths. Remember, in the Kekulé structure, there are alternating single and double carbon bonds. Well, single and double carbon bonds have different bond lengths. Single bonds are longer than double carbon bonds. This would mean the ring-like structure of benzene couldn't be a perfect hexagon as proposed by Kekulé. Unequal bond lengths would skew the shape, and bond angles between carbon atoms would also be different, unlike the 120 degrees in a perfect hexagon. X-ray diffraction experiments have shown that all the carbon bonds in benzene have the same bond length, about 0.139 nanometers. This is why the shape of benzene is a perfect hexagon, and yet poses the difficult question of why do the carbon bonds not match either the single or double carbon bond lengths? Surely they can only be single or double? We'll answer this question later after we've talked about another problem with the Kekulé structure. This other problem is with the reactivity of benzene, and more specifically, its hydrogenation enthalpy. When a double bond is hydrogenated, energy is released, a negative enthalpy change and we can measure the enthalpy change that occurs and compare them for different molecules, giving us useful information about the number of double or triple carbon bonds in a particular molecule. Now, in the Kekulé structure of benzene, there are three double carbon bonds. In cyclohexene, there is only one double carbon bond, 
It has the same shape as a KKLA structure, a hexagon, it just has one double bond rather than three. When cyclohexene is hydrogenated and turned into cyclohexane, an enthalpy change of minus 120 kJ per mole occurs. Or in other terms, the difference in energy between cyclohexene and cyclohexane is minus 120 kJ per mole. Cyclohexane is more stable than cyclohexene. Remember, saturated hydrocarbons are more stable than unsaturated hydrocarbons. It would make sense that, as the Kekulé structure of benzene has three times the number of carbon double bonds as cyclohexene, benzene should have an enthalpy of hydrogenation of minus 360 kJ per mole, or very close anyway, as 3 times minus 120 equals minus 360. The problem is, when benzene is hydrogenated, the actual measured enthalpy change is only minus 208 kilojoules per mole. This is way lower than the predicted value from the Kekulé structure and shows that benzene is more stable than predicted. Less energy released when benzene is turned into cyclohexane means it must already have been more stable and closer in energy to cyclohexane than predicted by the Kekulé structure. So what's going on? Well, Kekulé was right in his prediction that benzene is a cyclic hydrocarbon and his proposed hexagonal structure has been proved correct with modern X-ray diffraction and crystallography, meaning he still deserves massive respect. However, he was wrong about the alternating single and double carbon bonds. The bond length data and enthalpies of hydrogenation show that the carbon bonding can't be represented using single or double carbon bonds. Instead, we now show the bonding with a delocalized ring of electrons. We know that each carbon atom in benzene is bonded to two other carbon atoms and a hydrogen atom. This gives three covalent bonds. Carbon has four electrons in its outer shell, a valency of four meaning when it makes three covalent bonds of other atoms, there is one unbonded electron left over. The unbonded electron exists in P-shaped orbitals, which have a lobe pointing above and below the carbon atom. Each carbon atom in benzene will have one of these unbonded electrons. The carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen single bonds are all flat and in the same plane, meaning these P-shaped orbitals of the unbonded electrons are pointing above and below the carbon ring, a bit like sticking above and below a piece of paper. Each P-shaped orbital is holding one electron from each carbon atom. As the electrons from neighbouring carbon atoms will repel each other, the electrons arrange themselves in their orbitals in an alternating pattern. One above, one below, one above, and then one below, and so on, all around the carbon ring. There are now essentially three electrons in P-shaped orbitals pointing upwards, and three electrons in the same shaped orbitals pointing downwards. Each carbon atom, though, is still wanting access to another electron to complete its outer shell. To achieve this, the P orbitals each interact, creating a pi bonding system. You can kind of think of this as like the p orbitals merging to create a larger area where the electrons can be and move around. One area above and one area below the carbon ring or plane. Technically, I should point out that there are actually things called molecular orbitals being formed here. But molecular orbital theory isn't directly covered at this level, so we can think of it in this way. We now have two rings of electron density, one above and one below the plane each of which contains three electrons. The electrons will be moving so fast and quickly, you cannot ever say exactly where they'll be in the ring, meaning the electrons are delocalized. They no longer belong to one particular carbon atom or are stuck in one p orbital, but satisfy the carbon's desire to have full outer shells. We show this delocalized electron system with a ring in the middle of the hexagon structure of benzene. We know the electrons are in there somewhere. So why does this make benzene more stable than expected? Well, in very simple terms, electrons are high energy charged particles, constantly whizzing and moving around. The smaller the area they are forced to be in, the higher their energy. Anytime you can spread out the charge and movement of them in a molecule or ion, the more stable that ion or molecule becomes. 
With delocalized electron systems, electrons are free to move around in a larger area, meaning they become a slightly lower energy. For the Kekulé structure, there are three double bonds, each with electrons forced to stay in a confined area, making them higher energy. When the Kekulé structure is theoretically hydrogenated, these double bonds break and the electrons release some of that energy. In benzene, the electrons involved in the pi bonding system are at a lower energy and more stable in the first place, meaning when hydrogenated, they release less energy. This would explain the relative differences in the enthalpies of hydrogenation for benzene and the Kekulé structure of benzene, or cyclohexa 135 triene. It would also explain why all carbon bond lengths in benzene are the same. And it explain how benzene reacts. These delocalized electron rings mean there is a high electron density above and below the carbon ring. The delocalized electron rings are exposed, meaning the benzene is vulnerable to electrophiles and electrophilic attack, explaining why benzene reacts with electrophiles. The way benzene reacts with electrophiles and the mechanism for such reactions have been covered in different videos. See the links in the description below. So, to summarize, Benzene is a cyclic hydrocarbon with the molecular formula C6H6. A chemist called Kekulé proposed benzene has a hexagonal structure with alternating single and double carbon bonds. This structure is called the Kekulé structure of benzene and its technical name is cyclohexa 135 triene Experiments have shown that benzene does have a perfect hexagonal ring, like Kekulé's prediction but equal carbon bond lengths mean the Kekulé structure cannot be completely correct as single and double carbon bonds have different bond lengths. Benzene has also been shown to be more stable than the Kekulé structure predicts. In benzene, there is a pi bonding system where delocalized electrons exist in rings above and below the plane of the carbon ring. This gives benzene its relative stability and makes it less reactive than expected. It is also why benzene reacts with electrophiles. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.